Imagine being able to cut out a genetic flaw and change the prognosis of a fatal disease. Advanced gene editing technology underway here at UT Southwestern shows major promise for doing just that. Here to explain the role of CRISPR technology are molecular biologists Dr. Eric Olson and Dr. Rhonda basil -Duby. Glad you could join us. Dr. Olson, can you tell us what gene editing is and what is CRISPR technology? Gene editing is a revolutionary technology that now makes it possible to edit the genome, the DNA of any organism on this planet, including people. This is a remarkable technology that's provided precision, particularly with respect to changing errors in DNA that are responsible for human diseases. CRISPR is simply an acronym to describe the components of this system. You can think about a molecular GPS device as one part of it. This can be programmed to find a sequence in the DNA. The second component is analogous to molecular scissors, which can be delivered to the DNA and can then cut or change the sequence of the DNA. You can imagine how powerful this approach is. If we know the mutation in a DNA responsible for almost any disease in humans, and there are thousands of diseases in humans, that are caused by errors in DNA, we can, in principle, deliver CRISPR to that error and can change it back to the right sequence. Dr. Basil Duby, what happens to the disease genome after you've edited it and it's been repaired? We delivered the CRISPR components and we make a precise cut. And then the cell actually has the machinery to put the genome back in, in place and then you can have uh, you know, a um, corrected genome. And so you actually remove the mutation of the genome. Dr. Olson, you and your lab have published numerous studies about treating Duchenne's muscular dystrophy with this technology. How did you select that disease? What makes that disease a candidate for this technology? Duchenne muscular dystrophy or DMD is the Mount Everest of muscle diseases. It is the biggest one. It's been the biggest challenge. It has defied every therapy and it's a devastating disease for the young boys that are afflicted by it. In addition, we knew the mutations in the DNA that caused Duchenne. And so we felt we could correct it uh, through this approach. Dr. Olson, is it better to apply these treatments earlier in life? Does that lead to a more successful result? Once muscle in the case of DMD has been destroyed by the disease, there's little left to correct. So the earlier we can intervene, the earlier we can stop the progression of this disease. Dr. Basil Duby, tell us the exact genetic defect um, and what proteins being affected in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. There is a mutation in the gene that's called dystrophin. And there's over probably 7,000 different mutations in that gene. It's, dystrophin gene is one of the largest genes in the human body. If there is a mutation in the dystrophin gene that causes dystrophin not to be expressed, then these boys go on to have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Dr. Basil Duby, once the gene therapy techniques have been applied, how soon do you see a result? We have not done this in human patients. We're doing it preclinically right now in our animal models. And we see uh, within actually days, uh, the dystrophin protein is being made. Up to four weeks, we see that the muscle has regained its function and is also expressing dystrophin. And Dr. Olson, your work has been in animals with Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Tell us about the progression of the work that you're doing in humans and how that soon that will be ready for, a, for human clinical trials. The next step will be to move into human patients and that requires a demonstration of the safety and uh, the efficiency of, of the method. And that's the goal that we've set for ourselves. The translation of this basic science to the clinic is going to require a seamless interaction between basic scientists and clinicians. We've been very fortunate here at UT Southwestern to have remarkable institutional support. And we've also been successful in obtaining a national grant from the NIH, which supports our Wellstone Muscular Dystrophy Clinical Research Center, which is led by Dr. Basil Duby, Dr. Pradeep Mammon, and myself. Together, we think working with clinicians and basic scientists 
with patience and the support of the families that has really been remarkable in enabling us to move this work forward that that will ultimately enable us to achieve our goal of eliminating this disease through gene editing. Dr. Basil Duby, what health risks could be associated with this type of therapy? One of the you know, limitations or the detriments or things that we think about with CRISPR is that when it goes in to the cell and cuts the genome, we want it to cut in a precise place. Because one could imagine that if we don't use the right guide to tell these genetic citizens where to cut, that you can have it cutting in places that might hurt a gene. So we actually spend much of our time at the bench making sure that we can design the right, um, the right guide to tell CRISPR, to direct the CRISPR. Dr. Olson, are there other diseases that are ideal candidates for therapy with uh, CRISPR technology? In order to correct a disease with CRISPR, we need to know the error in the DNA. Once we know the error, in most cases, we should be able to correct it. This uh, technology is already being applied to correction of blood disorders, such as sickle cell anemia and beta thalassemia. It's being used to correct cancer cells. It's been used to lower cholesterol by uh, targeting enzymes in the liver. So virtually any disease that's caused by a mutation could in principle be corrected by CRISPR. Dr. Basil Duby, your lab along with Dr. Olson's group has made this remarkable progress in the treatment of, of Duchenne muscular dystrophy in dogs. Are there other diseases you're seeing this much progress in? We've started to work on some cardiomyopathies in our lab. And we're very hopeful that uh, we can use CRISPR technology to correct some of the mutations that we see in genes that are involved in heart failure. Dr. Olson, if you pull out your crystal ball and you think about, you know, what's the next five or 10 years going to look like um, for this technology, what do you see? This technology is going to change medicine and it's going to change humanity. Virtually any process that you can imagine that occurs biologically and is controlled by DNA can be modified by CRISPR. And it's really remarkable to realize that CRISPR was only described less than 10 years ago for the first time. And the pace at which this field is moving is truly breathtaking and unprecedented, certainly in my uh, lifetime. I want to thank you both for joining us today and for explaining in a very easy to understand way this very complicated technology and how it's transforming the lives of patients. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again for watching. Until next episode, stay safe and stay healthy.